Greetings, everyone. Uh, welcome. Today is the latest online session of uh, Issues of Technology and Communications for congregations and groups here in the Diocese of Washington. My name is Peter Turner, and I'm the Communications Technology Director at the uh, Episcopal Diocese of Washington. And today I'm joined by Neva Ray Fox of the National Episcopal Church. Um, Neva Ray, if you could just start off by telling us what your role is and what your work sure. involves up there. Thank you so much. It's Neva Ray and it's nice to be with you. Thank you so much. Um, my office is located at the Church Center, and which is located in New York City, and I am the Public Affairs Officer, so I deal all the time with media on all levels, um, whether it's the local level or the national level or the international level. And I'm just thrilled to be able to talk to you today about uh, what I think is really important in ministry, which is communications. Well, thanks so much for being um being a part of the discussion today. Um, and before we get started, uh, for those of you watching uh, currently, if you'd like to participate in the conversation, you can email questions and comments to training at edow.org, and we'll address those questions during or after the session. Today we are talking about media relations and what that means, why a congregation should worry about this, um, how to go about getting started. I would say that this is probably an area that's perhaps something of a mystery to many churches, perhaps, um, who don't have someone with expertise available to explain why it's important and how to go about approaching it. Um, Never Ray, what, what do we mean by media relations and why should a congregation be interested in it? Well, thank you, Peter. I, um, I think that one of the first things you have to remember is that communications is a form of evangelism. We're telling the good work of our church of the Episcopal Church, of our local congregations, and what our people are doing. We want to share what our activities are, what we as a church are doing in our communities. That's evangelism. And I think that's the key thing to remember. Now, when we talk about media relations, you know, there's media encompasses a great deal anymore. But I want to just throw a, a few fun facts at you first, if that's okay. Sure. But you might like to know who some famous Episcopalians are. We've had presidents, politicians, and legal luminaries. Franklin Roosevelt, Gerald Ford, President uh, George H. Bush, Colin Powell, Madeleine Albright, Justice Thurgood Marshall, uh, who used to also be a delegate to his own um, diocesan convention, Sandra Day O'Connor, and of course, um, the president goes to one of your diocesan churches when he does go to church. And there's a story that, please remember, that Franklin Delano Roosevelt was a member of Vestry of St. James Hyde Park in the Diocese of New York while he was still serving as president. So you can never tell who you might end up with vest on, on your vestry. <laughs> there's also a lot of artists, writers, musicians, and actors. Cecil B. DeMille, John Steinbeck, Tennessee Williams, Duke Ellington, Judy Collins, Mary Kay Place, Sam Waterston, Chris Collingsworth, who now is very busy over in um, Sochi, but uh, he is known to be an usher on a regular basis in his church. And Robin Williams, who famously said that one of the best reasons to be an, Abis an Episcopalian is that no matter what you believe, there's at least one other person who believes it too. <laughs> well, we are going to talk today about media relations and messaging. Specifically, we're going to talk about what is your message? What are you trying to say? Who is your audience? Who are you trying to say it to? How are you going to get that message out to your audiences? And, and the focus on media relations, how can parishes get con uh, coverage, what works and what doesn't work? I also want to make one other point, um, and this is a sad point, but I think it needs to be, to be said. We put the work out of our church and how important it is, but sometimes there is bad news. Just because we're a church doesn't mean that we won't get hit with some bad news. The key here is to be prepared for when it might hit. But let's talk about some of the things that you might be announcing. You know, you, your congregation is a community. It's a community of faith, it's a community of people, it's a community within a larger community. And you do a lot for the larger community. So you want to tell people about it. And there are lots of things that you can be sharing. Perhaps your church is celebrating a significant anniversary or milestones, or all the events that surround it. Maybe you have special programs for Lent, or Advent, or public forums. Um, notices about that going out to the area community, you might find people coming to these programs. Your soup kitchens, community gardens, food banks, homeless shelters. 
not only that you have those in response to those, but also that you might be seeking help or supplies or volunteers. It is not uncommon for a lot of our soup kitchens to have people from the community come in and um, volunteer who end up being members of that particular congregation. Maybe you're having a concert, a play, a dinner, a fundraiser, murder mysteries. My church just, went, just had a murder mystery that I was unable to attend, but it, it was a hit. And we had a number of people from the community coming in and participating. Maybe you're having a, a, a visit by your bishop or a significant guest. Maybe your youth group or your women's group or men's groups are doing something special. Maybe you as a community, you know, a congregational community, want to issue a statement on perhaps an issue or an event, something that's happening in the world. I'm sure there are other things that if you think about it that people outside the walls of your congregation would be very interested in hearing about. Now another thing that, that helps you is tools that you can use. And this is where we get to media. There are many, many tools that you can use in order to get your message out. And I'm just going to do a couple of them. Uh, we'll focus on media in a second, but your monthly newsletter or your weekly newsletter, whichever you do, your Sunday bulletin, your bulletins for special events. Um, perhaps you're having a wedding or a funeral and, and many congregations have a bulletin of some kind. Well, you know, you don't want to infringe on the event, but it doesn't hurt to do something. Make sure your website's included there so that people can come back. That's a good way of seeing that people see your congregation and how important it is to the community. Your website, to me that's a no-brainer. But it's one thing to have a website. You have to keep the website up to date because no matter who it is, that's one of the first places they're going to look for news about your congregation. Emails, coffee hour, new member packets, business cards, posters, letters, your signage inside and out, flyers, bulletin boards, advertising, yellow pages, although I have to be honest, I'm not sure how many churches are still doing yellow pages. It's, that's a local thing that you have to figure out whether it works for you or not. And of course, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, Twitter, and press releases. Now, I'm not going to go into how to do a press release because I think a lot of people already know how to do a press release. But you have to be sure of a couple of things. Make sure there is an email address for somebody to contact. Make sure that everything is spelled right in it and make sure your website is included in it. That's critical. What I would like to do, Peter, if I can, mm -hmm. is I'd like to go into the top ten list for media relations for your congregations. Sure. What I have Sounds done good. is gone through ten things that I think are really critical for you to get media relations that will really benefit your congregation. And number one, or excuse me, number ten, <laughs> David Letterman would be very angry with me. Number <laughs> ten, send your information electronically. There is no more uh, copying and stuffing envelopes and paper. You don't do that. Uh, there are some publications that won't even accept paper things, that they will only accept electronically. But when you're doing that, be careful not to use an attachment or a PDF. Because many organizations, maybe your own, block PDFs or block attachments from emails that they're not familiar with. And then you've just you know, done all this work and it's not going to be opened. I know that sounds you know, kind of basic, but it's true. Don't do that. Keep everything within the body of your email and you have a better chance of it being opened and being used. Number nine, send your information to all your area media. Now, you're going to know what is better for your particular area. Does the Washington Post need to know that you're going to be having um, you know, a, a, a ham dinner on Easter Sunday? Probably not. But your local newspaper, your local radio station, your local websites would be interested in something like that. Lo local television, radio. People listen to the radio all the time, so you know that's the, I have heard dismissals of radio as not being effective for media and don't believe that. It's very important. Websites. Um, and you can look at creative ways where to send your press releases. For example, on my congregation in the Diocese of New Jersey made me their PR person. Imagine that. One of the things that I do is I send it to our local municipality because there's a community calendar 
for our municipality. And I send it to all the area municipalities as well. I also send it to the library because the library has an ongoing calendar both on, um, on the web as well as when you're walking through. And when you're standing in line for the library and you're looking at the bulletin boards, that's just another way of doing it. So if you think creatively about where the people you want to reach the message are hanging around, that's a good way of getting your news out. Number eight, media coverage is a two-way street. Of course, you want to give information, you want to provide all the up-to-date information um, that you may have about whatever. This is also good for paving the way for when the media want to contact you. Perhaps they might want to contact you about an article or about an event that they're having. They'll remember you and they'll say, why don't we call this church if you have already established that relationship? So that's an important thing to keep in mind, that it is a two-way thing. Number seven, be prepared. Make sure that when you send information out to a writer, a blogger, or a video person, or a reporter, that there is the correct spelling of your church's name. Are you St. Thomas's as an S-T period Thomas, or are you S-A-I-N-T Thomas? Some places that makes a big difference. Make sure that they have the correct title of the people who are um, included in the release. Make sure the church's name is correct, the address, and of course, the website. Number six, and this one is really key. Watch your usage of um, words and your vocabulary. Try not to use church jargon. If you are making an approach to people outside of your own congregation, for whatever purposes, you know, they're not going to understand such things as nave. Yeah, the, the soup kitchen will be meeting in the nave. Where's that? The soup kitchen is going to be meeting at the church. It's, it's things that we just take for granted. Now, I know some um, church community uh, PR people prefer not to use the word Eucharist because they find that is also too churchy. Worship service. If you're one of those who prefer not to use U Eucharist, a worship service is also an appropriate thing. So be, be careful of that, you know, because there's a, sometimes if people, if the person who's getting your press release doesn't understand what you're talking about, that press release isn't going any further. Number five, avoid off the record and avoid no comment. There is no such thing. There's no such thing as off the record. There's no such thing as no comment. And there's no such thing as further discussion on this. Number four, never say anything that you're not authorized to say. This is a nice way of saying, talk what you can talk about and keep yourself out of trouble. This goes to other things such as perhaps there was a fire or an accident or something like this in your church. If it's a law enforcement issue, let the law enforcement talk about it. If there's medical things that need to, then medical people need to address it. I'm going to give you a perfect example. Um, prior to working here, I worked for the Diocese of New York. And in December of 2001, the cathedral um, suffered a devastating fire. Uh, it made the front page banner headlines of the New York Times. So to say that we had media crawling all over us would have been an understatement because they were. And every media wanted me to tell them what the cause of the fire was. Not only was I not authorized to say something, I also had no clue. But I said, well, you're going to have to check with the fire personnel. They're the ones who are handling them. I can tell you what we've done. I can tell you that the school was evacuated and this was done and that was done. Well, then they also wanted to know if anyone was hurt. Again, that wasn't my information. We have medical personnel over there. You have to ask them. So this is what I mean about being very careful about things that you can. I mean, answer the things that you can, but be careful about things that you can't. Number three, just assume that everything you say and everything you send out and everything you issue is going to be printed, broadcasted, blogged. It's going to be in the New York Times and the Washington Post. It's going to be on CNN. It's going to be on every blog you can imagine. It's going to be there. Once you realize that um, we are in a world where people really listen to everything and, and write everything down and blog things, you're better off. Now, I don't mean to scare you because it's not scary. It's good. Use it to your advantage. Number two, crisis communication can be a difficult thing that happens. But crisis communication can also be a result from something good that happens. 
Now, what I mean by crisis communications is something happens and you need to go above and beyond your usual media relations. I'll give you a perfect example. Once again, when I was working at the Diocese of New York, we had a church that received funding for a particular program. This is great. They were going to be having a special event to have the check received. We're still fine. The governor, who had national aspirations in those days, decided that he was going to come and present the check. Well, that just flipped everything around. This was a good thing. The church was getting the funding. The church was definitely going to be doing good for the community. But the governor was going to make himself, you know, be made. That's what I mean by crisis communication. And our role there was to just make sure that the media were, were aware of the fact of why we were there. We were there because this particular program was being funded. And the number one reason why media relations is important. Use social media as much as possible, but as appropriate. In the wacky world of the web, we need it. We need Facebook. I'm assuming all your churches have uh, Facebook pages, and that you have liked the diocesan Facebook page, and that you have liked um, the Episcopal Church Facebook page. And perhaps many of your own people have, in your congregation, have um, Facebook pages that they have liked with you. Face, especially Facebook on something like this is a great way to get your news out. If you've issued something to the media and sent an email, post it. Post it on your Facebook page. That gets a lot of buzz going. The same with Twitter. Not just tweeting out that you're going to be having an event, tweeting during the event. Um, Pinterest, taking pictures of it. Uh, what have I missed? Um, I, and I always miss one. I'm sorry. There's a lot that's going on. Oh, Foursquare, that you're there, that you're going to be going there. All of the social media, there's a lot of social media. And you can use it to your advantage. But one thing that I want to point out about social media, not one person has to do it all. And I think that's another key thing. This is the kind of thing that can be shared. Media relations can be shared if you have a committee. That's a very good way of um, you know, sparsing out what the different responsibilities are. I'll give you a perfect example. I have a Facebook page. I don't tweet. In our church, we have a whole group of people who just love to tweet. Great. What we're able to do is establish our own community and also be able to get our own information out. That's my top ten. I know that there have been a couple other questions. Why should you be involved in media relations? Because you do good work. Because this is evangelism. Because you're doing the work of the church. Because you're doing the work of our Lord. You are feeding people. You're housing people. You're helping people. You're helping kids nurture into good, responsible citizens and good Christians. This is a way of getting that news out. And that's why you should be doing that. How do you know if you're going to be successful? You know, that's a really, really good question. I think that's a great question. Um, and that's something that you have to assess before you start, especially if you're having a special event. What's your goal? Do you want 20 people from the outside? Do you want 40 people from the outside? Do you want to make $300,000? Do you want 20 more volunteers for your soup kitchen within the next six months? If you, if you take a look at what it is that what your goal is and start forming all of your media relations and your social media to that goal, I think you'll be better off. And you could say, okay, this worked. Okay, this didn't work. Now, that's another thing. Whenever you have some kind of a media relations campaign or get releases out or whatever, it always is good to take a look and say, that worked. That didn't. That worked and we're going to do this again, but we'll do this differently. That didn't work and this is why. This is an ongoing thing. St. Paul did this all the time. He was always writing letters and saying, okay, that works, so let's try this. Okay, let's try this. You know, it, it's not unlike that. Just take a look at what you've done to see whether or not it worked or not. Uh, let's see. Good resources available online to help a church get started. Sure. Um, and, I, Peter, I will send those resources to you. Okay? Great. Thank you. We'll, we'll put those online um, uh, after the session. So uh, and we can go online, online to the website and, and find those after this. Thanks. Great. Um, that's pretty much an overview of why congregations should have their own media relations. Um, Peter, have any questions come in? Yeah, um, one question was how how should um, how how would a congregation go about like initiating contact or finding the right contacts with their sort of local media, um, you know, 
uh, area, especially if 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 some of the churches are in uh, rural areas, mm -hmm. and um, you know that's obviously a different kind of um, sure scenario. You know, that's a really good question, and there's a couple of things that you can do. And once way this is a good once again this is a good way of getting a number of congregants involved. One thing is is you can poll your congregation and find out what are they reading or listening to. What media do they pay attention to? And then have them ask their friends and their family members. Who are they watching or listening to? So that would be the first thing. It's a good way of amassing that. Then what you can do is either check for the contacts online and on their website, or you might consider just old-fashioned, pick up the phone and say, hi, I'm so-and-so from such and such a congregation. We have information, and we want to make sure that we get it to the right person. To whom should we do? And the nice thing is, is that may take a little bit of legwork in the beginning. But once you've established that database, you have it. And that's really good, because that way you are really hitting um, the appropriate people for your area. That's a very good question. Thank you, Peter. That's good advice. Um, but another question was, um, what... Uh, sort of things should, uh, newsworthy things, should uh, a congregation kind of publicize? Because, for example, there's a lot of routine things that happen, worship services, and obviously, mm -hmm. you know, wouldn't would, would send press release about the coffee hour every week. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, what kind, of, what kind of things would you say, events would you sure. say? No problem. Um, thank you for that. <coughs> We're coming up to Ash Wednesday, which is March 5th. March 5th, I believe. Yeah. Yes, March 5th. Do you have special Ash Wednesday services? Uh, we have found that Ash Wednesday is, is a time that people realize, they, they wake up and they realize, I'm a Christian. So you might consider announcing that ashes will be dispersed at a certain time with your services. Do you have a, a Shrove Tuesday or a, a Fat Tuesday pancake dinner? That's another thing that people would like to know. We've done that with my own church, and, and the last um, pancake dinner we had, I didn't know half the people because they were all from the outside, and that was great. You know, That's what we're trying to do. Um, the same with the Ash Wednesday. Um, you might even consider a whole package that, you know, Fat Tuesday's coming or Shrove Tuesday, whichever you prefer to, to call it, and then you've got Ash Wednesday. And then for Lent, these are our Lenten services, and you can mention all of your services, um, the Sundays as well as during the week, if you have any kind of a Lenten program. Or perhaps you are um, having, um, you've issued a Lenten reading. Maybe there's a reading list that you want. That kind of thing. You're taking advantage of a point in time. Then later on, you would you could send out a release about when your Holy Week services are and when your Easter services are. Uh, when you're going to be having, um, if, if you're going to be having an Easter egg hunt or not, um, and if the community is invited. By, yes, that's a standard thing, but it's not a standard thing to, um, to, the con you know, to the world when another day people wake up and realize they're Christian is during Holy Week. Uh, and I'm, I'm being serious with that. I'm being absolutely serious. So those are, are kinds of things that you might want to announce. Uh, perhaps you're having a special Memorial Day service in which you are remembering um, soldiers who have fallen. I have seen this in some churches where they will invite the congregate or the community, excuse me, to give them names of people who would be remembered at the Memorial Day service, and that has been um, very effective because you know you you are remembering people in your community. But you're also that's that's an invitation of people to come to your church to have their loved one remembered. I always find, you know, points in time is a really good thing. Um, during August, when you do the back to school things, uh, it may be back to school for, um, you know, going back to school, but also it's back to Sunday school. Many churches have what they call a homecoming Sunday, a welcoming Sunday, a uh, come back to church Sunday, which is usually like the, the Sunday after Labor Day, where people can sign up for their Sunday school or their programs or whatnot. And that's a great time to promote what it is that your church is doing. We're having Sunday school, and we're having this. And oh, by the way, you might be interested in our weekly services, and you might be interested in the fact that our women's group meets. So, you know, you might consider starting off with a point in time and offering what it is that you are doing because that gets you back into people's faces and they say oh yeah it's Ash Wednesday I'm a Christian I'm gonna go get ashes 
Yeah, and, and we have uh, we've been in this diocese initiating kind of the Ashes to Go program. That's uh, fabulous. So so we've been able to get some attention from that. I think kind of it, it's been a nice way to kind of to, for some churches to actually get out on the streets and also to initiate some contact with some of the local uh, publications and media. And, and start I, a relationship. I I think Ashes to Go is just great. I know that there are some people who who don't think it has much of a value and I respect that okay I respect that I on the other hand think it's fabulous but what you can do you can announce that you're gonna have the ashes to go but you can also do it in live time and take some photos post it on your Facebook okay um, Pinterest I mean that was made for Pinterest uh, you know you, you can continue the conversation throughout the day um, you might consider taking a photo and sending it to your local media and say see we really are doing this so that they might be able to come out and take a photo that's a perfect thing and once again Peter that is a point in time it's a moment in time you're taking advantage of uh, what's going to be happening um, never do, do you have any um, kind of uh, are, there, are there some good like case studies or are there some good congregations or sites online that uh, they, so a congregation could look at as, as some good examples? They, obviously, your own parish, I'm sure, is a... Yeah, yeah no, don't go there. <laughs> well, you know what? I would suggest that the first thing you do is take a look at your other parishes in your own diocese. Look at your websites in your own diocese. I happen to think that your diocesan website is really good. And, and Peter, I think yours is one of the best. I also think another very good diocesan website is the Episcopal Diocese of Texas. I think they are very good too. But you might take a look at them and see what it is that you like about them and also concurrently what don't, what don't you like about them. Um, I, think, um, I think your cathedral also has a very good website. So that's something that you might take a look at. Um, I think the cathedral in, uh, I'm going to forget the name of it, I'm so sorry, um, in San Francisco, St. Mark's, um, also has another very good website. So you might take a look at those and see what it is that they have and what they don't have. Um, one thing that I hear from people that they like on websites is that there's an area for if you're a member already, you know, or if there's a member of, um, excuse me, or a section for those who are just searching. That's a nice way of doing it as well. Absolutely. And um, do you have any uh, also resources in mind, like um, any, any publications or books or anything, uh, other things that a congregation might might look at as a way to kind of get get started or get some guidance? Yeah, I have a couple books in mind. Um, and if it's okay, Peter, let me send you the titles, and that way oh. you can post them if that's okay. Absolutely. Because I will not get their title correct, and they're all sitting behind me, and I'm not going to go and pull them out now. But I will get those to you, okay? Okay, thanks, and we'll we'll put those online. Um, that's great. Um, Never, thank you so much for oh. um, for joining us today, and um, you know taking the time to participate in this. Um, so uh, thanks again for your wonderful work as well uh, at the at the National Church. You do a fantastic job. Peter, um, thank you. Yeah. I am delighted to do something like this. I'm absolutely delighted. I'm so thrilled that you asked me. And I'm going to put a plug in here. Uh, you know, I issue releases on a regular basis and um, all kinds of news that if you're interested in receiving it and you don't receive it, because, you know, I need to build my database as well, please email me. I'm going to give you the very easy email, nrfox. My first initial, my middle initial, and my last name, nrfox at episcopalchurch.org. I would be thrilled to include you on any of our, our um, press release list and any other kind of information that you might want. And thank you. I enjoyed doing this. Thank you. Thanks again. So, again, links and resources available online, uh, edow.org slash digital church with links to information and also to our YouTube channel. Um, thanks again, everybody, for joining us today, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Bye-bye now. Bye.